Welcome back to World Politics, and we turn to Italy now, where a vote in the lower house yesterday passed with an overwhelming majority, fulfilling a manifesto promise from the governing Five Star Movement. The scissors are out, and Italian politicians have voted to cut, well, themselves. Moves are now underway to slash a number of parliamentarians in both the lower house and the Senate. According to the Five Star Movement, 345 politicians are out, means 1 billion euros saved. But does Italy have too many politicians? Let's uh, take a look at some numbers. So on the face of it, they have 945, second only to the UK, and paling in comparison to countries like Malta and Luxembourg. So there you're looking at that graph. But when we look at the numbers compared to the population, it is a completely different story. And in terms of representation, Italy fares badly with only 1.6 politicians per 100,000 citizens. And Malta is actually leading Europe with 14. Point four. Okay, so let's get right into it uh, with politicians from these countries, in fact. So we have Ignacio Corral, uh, Italian MEP from the Five Star Movement. Roberta Merzola is still with us, a Maltese MEP with the European People's Party. And joining us is Seb Dance, a British MEP from the Socialists and Democrats group. Okay, first, I will ask you again, always with the Italy story, <laughs> long-awaited reform is uh, how it's been put. But the savings, I mean, you reacted to that one billion mm. um, in savings. It's negligible if you think about it. Um, what's, what's the real reason for doing this? Well, let's say that uh, this is a reform that uh, everyone has tried to do, but uh, this is the first time that uh, we managed to uh, achieve the result because every single legislature in Italy, someone tried but put the reduction of numbers of MEPs inside a bigger reform. And then it was refused but either it, by the parliament or the, the people. In the grand scheme of savings, though, is this really a big thing? Or it seems like a drop in the ocean they, considering Italy's fiscal it's situation. Italy though, is but. a very big country with a big economy. It's not one billion that changed the history of our country. The point is the responsibility of MPs. Having almost 1,000 MPs, many of them have not responsibility with the constituency and with the people. Mm. So having a little less means that you have more people that are held responsible to work. Okay, that's, so that's you're saying more accountability and maybe efficiency. Before I go to Malta, I'll ask you, Seb, why you were reacting to, uh, no, <laughs> to it's, that. No, it, it, it was the sum of money right. sounds huge, actually. To, in absolute it, 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 terms. Yeah, in absolute terms. Yeah. Very well paid. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean... Uh, it's a difficult one because, of course, I mean, each country has a different system. But in, in the UK, for example, the constituency link is very, very important. And each member of parliament represents anything between 75,000 to 100,000 people. Uh, and to reduce the number of MPs, to increase the number of constituents per MP, mm. obviously dilutes that link very substantially. And it, it's a balance, you know, there is right. a cost to reducing the number of MPs as well as a, as, a, as, a, as a benefit. So if we look at the Maltese example where it fares well in terms of representation, does this kind of cutting the number of parliamentarians actually endanger representation, proper representation well, of the first population? First of all, let's start with the financials. In Malta, right. the parliament is part-time, and unless you're in government and you're a minister, then the, the, the amount of money you receive is, 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 is low in comparison to, to other countries. But also, going back to what Sepp has just said, we have a system of very, very direct democracy, which means that our members of parliament actually knock on doors. They are mm. very well known in the, with their constituents. Constituents feel they have a direct link mm. with their representative. So suddenly slashing that number would have a direct direct impact because even though the numbers are, are proportionately mm. larger when, when, when compared to other countries, the way we elect our politicians means that you're, you're held accountable mm. right. for every vote you receive. And okay. that means before, you before, can actually... Before I get mm -hmm. you to respond, respond to let's that. first listen to what Italians have to say. So we asked Italians on the street to get some from reaction to this news and this is what they had to say. Adesso metteranno dei soldi però ecco magari ristruttureranno, faranno strade, eh, ci saranno delle per, per la sanità, magari faranno delle infrastrutture. Su questo spetta a qualcun altro dirlo. Ho dei dubbi su quanto effettivamente si possa risparmiare, però se è quello che eh, vogliono gli italiani allora è una provata che serve per suggestionare il grosso pubblico che secondo me non avrà nessuna incidenza se passerà la, la votazione. Uh, yes. Yeah, I will let you say what you have to say, but let me ask if we, also if the motivation um, behind this is really fiscal or political in the sense that you are 
talking to your base, your no, voter to base. Under, to understand okay. what does it mean, what this reform does it mean, we have to explain how the Italian representation system okay. works. For example, my region, Sicily, the Parliament of Sicily cost more than the General Assembly of Spain. We have regions, the regional uh, MPs are paid the same money of the okay. national one. We have then provinces and then we have city municipalities. So it's a very big system of representation. Cutting 345 members of parliament, you're not reducing the democracy space because actually mm. in Italy, the only one uh, election where you cannot choose your representative is the national one. And mm. are the parties who choose the ones who sit in the parliament. It's a very different system okay. than in mm. the UK when you have a small constituency and you have a direct, so, a direct that's relation. Similar, so, yeah, you can right. tell that there is a difference between so MPs, actually, I'm MPs more, who are elected directly I'm more related with my constituency myself. We are 73 yeah. Italians to, uh, yeah, yeah. in the European exactly. Parliament because exactly. we are elected with preference votes. Exactly. Okay. And like in the national election, not. So there is no reduction of the space so of what, democracy. What, what, it's a reduction of sure. spending money. money. So this, you're saying that this is really a fiscal move? In, in this sense. It's a, just, and it know, was a promise it's by a way, I, I mean, I would call it like this. It's a way of normalizing okay. the democratic process in Italy because so, sometimes things are excessive. With the democratic process. Sometimes. That, cause I, I love that. Sometimes. Because sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I also saw there were some concerns about um, with, when you have fewer lawmakers and that's easier to have more control up at the top. Is this a danger that you're seeing in this? Yeah, I think generally that can be a danger. I, I accept completely that the different countries have different systems, different reforms will work better in some countries uh, <coughs> more than others. And we can only give our own uh, country's perspective in terms mm -hmm. of what we, what we feel about that. But yes, I feel that that could obviously be a danger. And, and in terms of public opinion, of course, when you talk about cutting the number of members of parliament, people will always wave and cheer and go, yeah, we hate them, they're all awful. And of course, <laughs> the reality is representative right. democracy is extremely important. We have to defend it. There are different ways of defending it, but I would think that generally, as a principle, cutting the number of MPs obviously poses risks in terms of scrutiny of the government. All right, well, there you go. Different view from uh, three different uh, European countries on that topic there. Well, coming up on Raw Politics, it looks like a politician, sounds like a politician, but is it a politician? Experts are warning on the rise in deep fakes online. It could cause a real-world political crisis. That's up next.